Good morning, every nation church Penang. It's time to worship God. Shall we all be up on our feet? And let's come together with one heart, one strength, one spirit. Let's worship Him.
you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, oh God. Come at way, oh God. We want to choose to praise you and honor you, Lord. Thank you. I pray, Lord, that through these songs, oh God, you will minister to the heart of the people, just like how you ministered to me, just like how you healed me, oh God. We want to focus our eyes on you, Lord.
So this morning, oh God, we want to come to you in praise, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I come to you. Let my heart be changed. Renew, flowing from the grace that I found in you. Lord, I come to know the weaknesses I see. You know, church, truly there's nothing, there's nothing more powerful than God's love. It's unquenchable. It's limitless. 
God's love is perfect and unchanging. It's pure and unending. That's God's amazing love for you and I. So why don't, why don't we just take a couple of minutes to just come to God and say, God, I love you. God, we are so thankful for your love. Come to Him. Oh, Lord God Almighty, we thank you for your amazing love. Your love that builds us up. Your love that never ever forsakes us. Your love that never even look at what we have done in the past and what we are going to do. Your love is so unconditional for each one of us. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the power of your love. And oh Lord God Almighty, even as we come to you, we know your love will never, ever leave us. That in times of desperation, God, we just come to you and just accept you as what you are, as who you are. We just come to you and cling to you because of your love for each one of us. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning and welcome to Every Nation Church Penang. I would like to welcome first time visitors in our midst. If you're here for the first time, at the count of three, would you lift up your hand? One, two, and three. <laughs> Wow, thank you for joining us. Now, is there anyone here who is not a member of any live groups? You know, we have uh, live group meetings throughout the week and we have uh, live groups in different locations. And you know that live groups is a place where we pray for another, we uh, basically share life with another, one, one another, we uh, root for one, for one another, and of course, we share food with one another. So make sure, if you're not a member of any life group, give a shout out and we'll reach out to you. And now, I would like to pass this time to Joyce for the offering message. Thank you. Hello, church. Good morning. Um, I will share the offering message for today. So let's begin with the verse. The verse is from... Book of Proverbs, chapter 11, verse 24 to 25. One gives freely, yet grows all the richer. Another withholds what he should give and only suffer want. Whoever brings blessings will be enriched, and, where, and one who waters will himself be watered. So many people in our society now trying to hold on to as much as their wealth as possible. But God blesses those who give freely of their time, talents, and treasure. We need to remember that everything we have belongs to God. We often lose sight of the fact that it is God who gives us the ability and opportunity to make a living and think we have achieved our success through our own hard work and talents. So we should gain a right perspective on our possessions when we learn to give back uh, a generous portion to God and to others in need. So we, when we give generously, God often supplies with more so that we can give more. So what do we gain by giving? We are not always rewarded monetarily, um, but we are rewarded in many other ways. Freedoms of enslavement from our possessions, the joy of giving, and, and the pleasure we give God. So church, let us start today to shift to the right perspective and give back to the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, we are here today to give back to you and thank you for your provisions all the time. In Jesus' name, amen. So thank you for your generosity. Brother Casey will come out and share the words with us after this. Thank you.
Good morning. Welcome to our 9.30 service, and uh, my name is Casey. <coughs> and uh, as you've seen the, the video earlier, we are starting a new series. Of course, there's been a uh, uh, trying and a difficult week. And, uh, but let's uh, talk about what we want to be covering this uh, series. This is a series on mental health, and uh, I'm sure you have been reading on a lot of... Uh, research and studies that shows that there's a rising trend in, uh, in the area of uh, mental health. Let me just, okay. All right. So here is just a, a quick stat to show the state of uh, the mental health in the world today. As you can see, you know, Sweden over here is like, how widespread are, you know, stress, depression, and so on. And surprisingly, Sweden is at like at the very top, 45%, right, of uh, the citizens there, of course, stretching down, down to Japan, 18%. And of course, if you look into Southeast Asia, the black part here is the area where they find that life is not so good, the well-being, uh, right? And I think the highest, very interesting, is actually uh, Singapore. Can you see? Singapore, 30 uh, 34, no, 35 plus 6 percent, right? The 6 percent is not good at all, right? Not good at all, so it's 40 percent, I don't know. And there's some trends you can see later on. Now, of course, in Malaysia, one of our biggest concerns is the stress is caused by, uh, we will see later on, social media, right? So because of this, the objective of this series is for us to be able to understand what the Word of God says about this mental health and mental well-being, right? And how can we approach this in a holistic way? Secondly, we also want to find out how, uh, for those of us who are struggling with some of this, what are some uh, of the, uh, the teachings of the Bible that can help us? And of course, for the rest of us, we want to be more aware how we speak to people who are struggling with this area of mental health. So we are going to have four, four series over here. I'm going to start off by looking at, you know, the wholeness, holistic uh, way of life is actually found in God. And that's what we're going to look at, draw from the, the principles in the Bible. Then next week, we're going to look at what are some ways that we can go on a path to wholeness. And then third week, we look at wholeness by grace. We need the grace of God. And finally, how we can bridge all this together. So let's uh, read the, the uh, my message is uh, basically broken down into three questions. Very simple. The first one is, what is mental health? What does the Bible say about this? Number two, why is there an issue of mental health disorder? And the third one is that, how can we draw from the you know, principles of God to be able to foster mental health in our life? Uh, the anchor verse is from the book of 1 Thessalonians 5, 23-24. I'm going to read this. Now may the Lord of peace himself sanctify you completely. Uh, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We truly believe that your word is in spite of the Holy Spirit and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. We pray today that you will bring life to your word uh, as we open our hearts and our minds. Teach us, Lord, your truth and what it means for us to be wholesome in you, to be full and abundant. Lord, teach us the, the principles that we can do with our thoughts, with our emotions and our choice and so on. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So basically, if we look at this verse, what it says is that, you know, when we are, when we got separated from God, our spirit is dead, right? And when we come back to God, our, our spiritual life is, is reconciled and we get awakened. But the problem is that our thoughts and our, our thoughts and our choices, the decisions, all these are still not completely perfect. And that's why after we are justified, we don't really do anything, we are justified in Christ. But once we're justified, there's still a journey for us to become more and more Christ-like. And that's why the journey of changing the way we think, the way we feel, the way we choose is called sanctification. And look at this. God says that He will ensure that He will nurture all of this. It will grow all of us, our spirit, our soul, and our body. And that's the basis of how we believe that we can look to God to be able to understand how we can nurture and foster our mental health. 
So first of all, I want to start off by asking, what is actually mental health? It's so important for us to understand this because sometimes when we talk to people, we use the wrong words that can actually damage it even more. So let's look at some of the continuing some statistics from uh, research over here. You can see in Singapore, huge, huge, big problem of, uh, of health. But of course, we are in Malaysia, so we're going to look at, I think over here you can see, okay, I'm not, I, can't, I can't read. So can you see over 29%, 29% and 2017 study says that one out of five teens feel overwhelmed, two out of five suffer from anxiety. And mainly it's caused by, because of our traumatic experience in childhood, family history, you know, our DNA has a big part of it. What I read is that our DNA has got some of these uh, so, uh, sort of uh, struggles of uh, mental health uh, issues. And then when stress comes in, it triggers, right? So we need to understand this. And interestingly enough, if you look at it, the 2019 study to show those demographics that are affected by this, 11% of 18 to 24 suffers from struggles of mental health. Now, people like me, very relaxed, chill, only 2%, you see, no problem, right? And uh, also, can you see, if you earn too much money, stress, 13%. Uh, that's why, like me, very relaxed, no money, right? 6%, yeah. So, therefore, and this is what we see out in uh, Southeast Asia. R really interesting, right? Uh, in the case of Vietnam, the, the stress is work stress, right? Thailand looks like sabai, sabai, they're very relaxed, very take like easy, you know. Malaysia, our problem struggle is um, in social media. Now, interestingly, in Singapore, the, the demographic group is actually the older people. Interesting, you know, I was in Singapore a few months ago, sitting on a taxi and I just talked to a taxi driver and said, hey, you know, how is Singapore? You know what he said? Singapore is good for foreigners. <laughs> for us, like here, it's too expensive. That's why he was like in his 70s or whatever, he's driving a taxi, health. A big problem so i can i can see that now of course in the philippines uh, because of economy uh indonesia very faithful people and so on so these these are the trends that we're seeing happening around the world right so what actually is mental health i want to be very clear to differentiate between mental health and mental illness so mental health according to who and so on it's a state of our emotional psychological and social well-being Right? How are we feeling? How are we, are we feeling in control of our lives and so on? Now, of course, on the downside, hey, life is good, man. You know, I trust God, I have peace of mind and so on. Then my life is flourishing. High level of well-being. That, that is the goal that we want to drive towards. We want to have a high mental health so that whatever storms come in our life, we are able to process it. We are able to make the right decisions. That is strong mental health. On the other hand, it's low levels of well-being where we're languishing. Oh, yeah, what to do? Okay, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. Lah. You know, I mean, I'll just wait for the next thing to come. The door opens and that's it. You know, if no door opens, just keep quiet. Yeah, so then we're languishing. We're struggling with life, right? On the other hand, mental illness is a condition where there is biological, something is wrong with your organs. And Oh, I see a lot of doctors here. I'm going to be very careful what I say. But certainly, like, you know, uh, we have three parts of our body we'll see later on. Our body, our soul, and our spirit. So our body, unfortunately, is only a vessel, but it's really broken. That's why we all will die one day. We all will leave earth one day. That's why we get older. You can see wrinkles all around, right? So that is something that we, we have to accept. So sometimes there are issues with our brains. And, and the interesting thing about the science of neuroscience research is that now we begin to understand more how our brain works. Like, for example, Alzheimer's disease. What causes Alzheimer? So there are certain things that if we understand, we can learn to protect our health a little bit better and I will talk a little bit more later. So mental illness means you have a condition of your, of your uh, you know, mind, of your, you know, of your biological part, your organs and so on. So that means we can be on one extreme, no mental illness. On the other hand, we have schizophrenia and so on, bipolar, chemical imbalance. You probably heard about uh, uh, Anthony Bourdain, you know, Anthony Bourdain, the French food show, really famous, successful and so on, and he committed suicide. Of course, it's easy for us to understand why, why people do like that. But th that's because an issue of the chemical imbalance and so on. So that's a mental illness. Now, obviously, if you look at this, right, if we are not careful to manage our thinking process and so on, what do we believe in? Where do we put our trust and faith in? 
So if we languish all the time, then it will lead towards possibly the danger is that we will become having some kind of a mental illness condition. So that is why we want to ensure that looking at the word and seeing how and also learning from uh, researchers and experts to see how we are able to sustain and foster a healthy mental well-being. That's what we look at, right? And what are some of the common uh, diagnoses of uh, mental health disorders, depression at the very top, right? So this one is a study around the world. You can see that depression is very top 69%. And there's another chart I don't want to put inside here because I've got not so much time, right? So it shows that uh, consistently over there, women suffer more than men, unfortunately. Right, depression, anxiety, and so on. So these are the things that I just want to give you have an overview so that you'll become more sensitive and more aware to this. So now can you see over here, one can have good mental health or poor mental health. And this one has got nothing to do with our mental illness, right? We can be, nothing is wrong with us, but because the way my, think, my thinking is, I'm having really bad mental health. Very simple. Right? I'm in a company dinner. You see how our brain, don't, don't even talk about our spirit, don't talk about spiritual side. We must get right with, with God first. But even we're right with God, sometimes poor thinking can lead us to poor mental health. Very simple. I'm in a company dinner, all right? So a company dinner, there's a lucky draw. <laughs> and oh my goodness, I won a lucky draw. <laughs> I mean, so I went up. <clears throat> wow, voucher for $50. Oh my goodness. Come back to the table, so excited. Until the next lucky draw. <laughs> Edwin gets 3,000 ringgit. Now, five minutes ago, I was so happy. God is good, wonderful, and so on. Now, what is this and so on? And if I don't manage my thinking, my happiness, my joy is gone just because of one thing, how I think about it, right? Imagine if I did not see the second lucky draw, I go home, I'm a happy man. But just because something happened, I process it. That's why that is our, our mental, you know, interpretation is always the thought. It's the thought, the thought that comes from our memory and so on. Oh, I've always been unlucky or whatever and so on. People treat me unfairly. That thought, look at the current incident, give me a process for me to interpret why me again. And as a result, that's why my emotion is very negative. And then my thinking will drive my emotion. My emotion will drive my choices. And then what? I look at Edwin, I don't like him anymore. <laughs> or anyone for that matter with white hair. No, if I'm not careful, if I'm not careful, then I will think like that. And sometimes if we're not careful, we are unaware, then we will react to other people, which is why you see some, sometimes people want to help us, we just react to them without realizing. So all these are the things that relate to our mental well-being. So therefore, can you see over here? Now, obviously, we don't have any illness. By the way, this illness talks about the illness that's related to our mind and our, our thoughts and our thinking and so on, right? All the organs related to our brain. But of course, we also suffer sometimes from physical illness. So, but over here, can you see, you may not have any uh, mental illness, but if you have poor mental health, you are languishing. You are just like not happy with life and unfulfilled, uh, purposeless and so on. Now, on the other hand, even we suffer from some form of mental, well-being, mental illness, we can still flourish. We can live each day and say, what can I do today? You know, all of us, we all know that one day we all will leave earth. We grow old and we'll die. No matter what it is, no matter how rich and famous you are, we will one day have to leave earth because of sin. We'll see later on, right? But what we can do is that we cannot try to keep our physical life for eternity. We can only live each day to the fullest and ask God, what is it that you want me to do? to do this year, today, and so on. If we live that, that's truly called living life to the fullest and we can always be flourishing. And I believe God gives us the empowerment and the ability for us to do that. So these are some things that we need to be very careful because now I want to bring awareness to our congregation that when we see people struggling with mental well-being disorder, let's not be so quick with our words and so on. For example, say, ah, yeah, people anxiety, yeah, just need to relax, uh, chill, chill, chill. Casey, why are you so anxious, right? No, no, I mean, not, not helpful at all, right? Or say, oh, people with depression are just lazy, uh, they don't want to work, right? Please be very careful with our words. Huh? In fact, later on, I will show you some research that proves to us that the way we talk, it changes the thinking, the process, the feeling of the people around us, you know, that, that negativity talk, even at work. People have discovered that if you want your company to work well together, you must try to minimize the word no, right? You can still say yes uh, if you can, you know, yes with something, 
But if you say no, it creates a lot of defense mechanism in our brain, right? Therapy is for broken people. Uh, medication is for, you know, crazy people. So words like this, we need to be very careful to judge people. People with mental illness, uh, you know, lack willpower, and uh, mental illness is a weakness. And especially for Christians, we want to be very careful that we don't simply be overly simplistic, you know. Simplistic means making something that's very complex to become very simple. It's, ah, yeah, this one, I just drink this water, kautin. Right, it's very, very simplistic or complex problem. So as we see later on, that it can be many, many causes. So this is what we found out that this is happening around the world. But what does the Bible say about mental well-being? And the Bible understands as God understands because He created us. And there are also references in the Bible where God acknowledges that we struggle with this mental uh, condition. Look at Psalms 42.5. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why are you in turmoil? See, these are the, the thoughts and the feelings and the choices. Hope in God, for I shall again praise Him, my salvation. And Proverbs says, anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down. We understand when we are anxious, we're worried about what's happening and so on, but a good word. So the Bible over and over mentions about this. And of course, one very famous passage of our great prophet Ezekiel. Remember, he was chased by, he was, uh, he was hunted down by Jezebel and so on. And he comes to a place where he <laughs> And then, but he himself went on a day's journey into the wilderness, came and sat down under a broom tree, and he asked that he might die, saying, oh, it's enough, oh Lord, just take my life, and so on. So he struggled, he, he's depressed, and so on. He wants to give up, right? So it's mentioned, and there are many other scriptures which I don't want to spend my time reading here, but you can say words like depressed, downcast, sorrow in Psalms, and they call, oh, my hearts are overwhelmed, you know, waves overwhelmed, and so on. These are, the, these are the references in the Bible that you can look up and so on. But I want to tell you why God understands uh, the struggles we go through in our mental and emotional health. Because in Genesis, where God describes how we were first born, you will begin to understand why we struggle with this area. Because God says, I mean, the Bible says that, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, body, right, the physical part, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. That's why we become alive. Because God takes the, the dust and a form into a physical body, breathes his life, and there we become a living being or living soul. So if you look at it, all of us, there are three parts of a person. The first part is our body, or the Greek word say soma. By the way, the body is temporary. No matter how much you want to go to the gym, you eat all this organic food, you will die one day. I I'm sorry to say, right? We all, I wish I can live forever, but no, right? And our body is actually just a dwelling place for our soul and our spirit. So when we look at our body, it's just the, f the five senses, we breathe, we smell, and so on. And of course, our organs, our flesh. So our body can have problems, can have physical disorder, right? My arm is broken, you know. Of course, when my brain is broken, that's when we talk about mental illness. Then we have our soul, right? And our soul is where psyche, where uh, people say psychological treatment and so on. So actually, that's who you are. Who you are, you, your soul is your personality, Right, the way you talk and so on, no matter how you change, you've grown thinner, fatter, older, we know who you are. Because why? How the way you think, you process, you engage with me. So here's our personality. Over here is where our mind, our emotion, our will. And it's very important. Everything starts with what we think, and our thinking will create emotions in us. Our emotions will make choices in our lives, and our choices will determine our destiny. Yeah, right? So that's why that part is eternal. When we die and we without Christ, then our soul will go down into the lake of fire. But thank goodness that we all are saved. So when we die, when the body dies, the soul will return, right, to God if we are with Him. Then, of course, we have a spirit. And remember when Adam and Eve sinned, the first thing he says is that, you know, you will surely die. That means that spiritual life is gone. So this is where that spirit life where we of course, as Christians, we are aware where, because you see the, the pneuma, there's a breath that's given to us during that. And over here, our spirit determines our identity. Our body is our dwelling, how we, how we relate to others, God world conscious. That means if I am someone who is physically healthy, I can engage with the world, I can do things, I can be active, I don't need to rely on people. Because why? Because physically I'm healthy, right? I have no disorder. You know what's the meaning of disorder? That means it's, there's, dis, there's dis 
order, there's no order, right? It's like at ease. Huh? At ease, you're very at ease, you know? Relax, now. Nah. When you're dis-ease, you have disease, right? So you, if things are in order, working in order, then you're orderly. But when you have disorder, that's why, that's why our brain is very chaotic thinking. So when we talk about mental well-being, it means our thinking is very chaotic. Ooh, what's happening and so on. And our emotions are up and down. Which is why when we have God, we are calm. We are at peace. We can trust God. We have hope. Even though the physical circumstances around us are so challenging. Why? Because we are at peace with God. At ease. Right? So this is our personality. And of course, our spirit is where we have our identity. Our spiritual connection with God. When we don't have that, then we are just basically... Uh, exposed to our own human spirit. So now, if you look at it, so our body, we can have our body which is not at order. That's why we have illness and sickness and so on. But as we remember that this part here is temporary, right? Of course, we want to maintain health, but one day, no matter how healthy we are, God will call us home. Our body will become dust as it grows back. So there's no, no, we, we must understand it and try not to keep it forever. Now, of course, our soul is here. How do we manage our thinking, our emotion, and our choices in our life? And over here is that who are we in Christ? Who, what do we I believe in? Right? What is the meaning of life? What, who holds the truth? And this is the basis of where all this disorder comes into us because of our brokenness from God. We'll see that later on. Okay, so we have what is spiritual disorder. Spiritual disorders mean when I don't have my foundation in Christ, in God, in, in, you know, in the truth, the way, the life, and so on. I remember before I became a Christian, I had all these kind of charms. And my mother always wanted to protect me, you know, all these kind of charms and so on. And I remember that I was going to Sarawak to do a project and I started a business with my friend and so on. And I heard there was some conflict, you know, in, in the partnership. And I was told that, oh, Casey, be careful. Right? You go to Sarawak, there are a lot of chums. Uh, so this is spiritual disorder. Lah. Now I got more panic and so on. So what do you get more, go and burn more kind of, uh, yeah. Uh, but I tell you, when I became a Christian, I still remember to this day, I resist because I'm the great resister. You know, I always think I'm better than everyone else. I don't believe in God. You come and tell me, you know, the Chinese say, nah, uh, the Cantonese, because people keep sharing the gospel with me, I keep arguing until they say, don't talk to Casey. I'll hit <laughs> Because you talk to him about Christ, you know, you just vomit blood. Because it's true, I say, tell me lah. Why you keep telling me Jesus love me? Why do you ask Jesus to come and tell me? I say, give up. So I'm someone who is like so resisting, you know, the gospel and so on. And when I become a Christian, I still remember to this day. It's just like a burden just lifted and so on. And we were, we were cleaning up because we burned up some of the, the, the idols and stuff and so on. And April and I, we just cleaning up the house and listening to scripture and so on. I say, oh my goodness, we just said, why did we wait so long for this? You know, so that's why I have peace. So when we don't have God, when our relationship with, in the spiritual world is in disorder, that's when our chaos happens. So I can tell you that the root cause of all, and now I am not discounting people who struggle with mental illness. It's no different people who have some disability physically, right? They, they struggle with that area. Wow. See, disorder. <laughs> so, yeah. So, basically, everything starts with our foundation in Christ. We'll see later on. So, why? Why are there higher incidence of mental health disorder? So, mental health is, is good. We are healthy. We are functioning and so on. When we have a disorder, that's when we are surviving. We are struggling. I oh, my yeah, dear Lord, Pastor, what to do? Please pray, pray for me. You see, that I'm struggling. You know, even though I don't have any illness. But because of my mind. So anyway, from the research from the experts, they say mental health actually is caused by, or mental health disorder, they call it three main areas. One is biological, of course, like we say, body. You know, our biology, our brain, Alzheimer's disease, basically is one, is our neurons become powdery, cannot connect to each other. I'll show you some picture later on, right? So there's, there's the body part, you know, we have our, some kind of a DNA or our brains are not running. Why do people suffer from epilepsy? Because the right brain and the left brain cannot connect. And you know what? Through all this research, they discovered that people who suffer from epilepsy, the, what they try to do, they cut the connection between the left brain and the right brain. Right? And that helps to manage a little bit. So these are biological reasons. But secondly, is psychological. Oh, what's happening? Mental health, right? Psychological, that means the way we think, the way we think about life and so on, our thoughts and our emotions and so on. That's why some people say, oh, this person, oh, 
very uh, you know trigger one ah uh, oh yo be careful lah uh, want to talk to Casey ah uh, uh, ask the secretary how's the mood today ah uh, you see that psychological issue who I think about oh I suck lah uh, nobody likes me and so on so that's uh, it's not uh, physically my brain is functioning well but actually my thought life and the third one is our environment social how we treat each other so biological what is it physical right our immune stress response our genetic and so on neurochemistry the 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 chemicals that's in our brain uh, psychological is of course my temperament my self esteem that is why our spiritual life is so important because if our identity is not secure in Christ that's when every little thing will affect me wow Kevin did not smile at me today. Uh. So unhappy uh, today. I go home, I cannot eat, cannot sleep. And, uh, I shower, also kind of get wet and so on. You see that? <laughs> right? Because of my thought, my thought life and so on. And then of course, external. This is where we see a higher incidence because of social media. Do you know there's a study to say that if you are unaware, if you watch, watch mindlessly Netflix, the more you watch Netflix, the more unhappy you are. If you are unaware, like, oh, yo, why are they all so happy, one of the family? Oh, so rich one, uh, so handsome, uh, and so on, right? And apparently, there's a study to say that the more you watch Netflix, if you are unaware, you shop more. Yeah, there's a study, every hour you shop much more, right? That's why Netflix is having all this algorithm to get you to watch even more. Now, in between, can you see over here, right? Between your biology and your psychological, right? How you respond to, you know, what, what is your reward system? What gives you pleasure and so on, addiction and so on. Now, of course, between over here is you have conflicts, right? Between your, uh, between your and remember, family, you know, relationships and so on, right? Because there is some kind of conflict relationship, your thinking process, I saw, you know, why this person treat me like that and so on. That's also another cause of that illness. And of course, over here is the environment in our body. We inject, we take drugs and so on. We take medication. All this can become a factor. Okay, I've got five more minutes, right? I'm going to stress already, <laughs> right? So, but can you see? That's what the world says. But I tell you, the Bible has got the secrets of life, truth to us. And I tell you what's the reason why it causes. I'm, I'm not denying that there are some physical aspects, the organ side of our brain that we need to treat. But I tell you, the foundation of all this is found here in Genesis 3, 16, 17. When Adam and Eve disobey God. See what happens? To the woman, I will surely multiply your pain and childbearing. So first time pain comes into that perfect life in the Garden of Eden. When God first created us, everything is perfect. Why? Because our spirit, our body, and our soul is all aligned. Our thinking is follow, following God's truth and our action is aligned with one. There is perfect harmony. But now, can you see over here, your desire, the woman, now you have f relationship conflict and so on, and your, and your husband will rule over you. Now there's a sense, I want to have power over you. And because of Adam, see, because you have listened to the voice, you have eaten of the tree and commanded, you shall not eat of it. Curse is the ground. So now work becomes a suffering. You know, that's why everything is ring, 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 suffering, suffering, right? You know, boring, yeah? And because of our sin, because of our separation, so there are thorns and tears of what we do, and we live in a world, the second law of thermodynamics, right? Things will only get worse. That is why we don't see any long-term future on the journey on earth, and that's why we are looking forward to an eternal life with God, because God wants to create a new earth and heaven. So therefore, if you, if you look at it, in the original Garden of Eden, the body, the soul, and the spirit is all together aligned. But because of sin, therefore, as sin comes into the world through one man, and death through sin, all of us are born with a taint of sin. And because of that sin, our spirit, if we are not uh, reconciled with God, this God says that I am separated from you. And because of this, we have no foundation of identity and truth, so therefore, we look into the world. And that's why our thinking, our thought process is all controlled by the world. And you can see over here, Romans 8, 7, 8 says, For the mind that is sought under flesh is hostile to God. You are an enemy of God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. This is the problem. And because of this thinking, I don't know, you know, where's the future. I don't know who is control of my life. That's why I stress. I worry. Anxiety. I don't know where's the future. And I suffered through that before I became 
a Christian. I, when I was an uh, unbeliever, I want to be rich. I come from a very poor family. I want to be rich. So I, I will never give up working so hard and so on. But every business I go into, failure, suck, I, I mean, you know, nothing comes out of it. I'm not kidding you. Until I get to know Lord and the peace of God. And I tell you, I don't have many things, but I'm rich in Christ. Because through my entire journey, as God brought me to Thailand, Philippines and so on, can send my kids to, to school and so on, and I have to worry about food on the table. No, I mean, I don't eat fine dining like you all, but it's enough for me, right? But that's it. If you focus on how much can you eat, right? The more you eat, you see, the layers in the one. So, which is why that, that is, the, is the root cause. And Ephesians 4, 17, and now I say to you, testify the Lord that you must no longer work. That means if you are without Christ, you are like the Gentiles. And can you see, because our thinking, we are so proud of our own thinking, we don't, we don't align our thinking with the God's truth. You see, whatever we are thinking on our own is futile. We don't really know the entire picture. They are darkened in our understanding, alienated from the life of God because of ignorance in them. I don't know whether you read about this uh, amazing invention of mankind, the JWST, John Webb's Space Telescope. They launched a telescope into space 1.5 million miles away from Earth and because it wants to capture the start of the universe. And the way they designed it is so incredible because this telescope must be so cold so that it can actually attract the right information from thousands of light years away. And yet, you're out in space, the sun is so hot. So can you imagine the genius of mankind to launch a, a rocket with a telescope that can open up and just stay behind the shadow of the earth and it's, and it's just orbiting around there. And you know what? This wonderful discovery only showed the futility of human thinking because scientists for many years have been saying that the Big Bang, the world started with the Big Bang one thirteen point five billion years ago, and the uh, and the world is expanding, but because of this telescope, they discovered that there are other universes existing even before thirteen point five billion. All of your theory is gone, but you know what? The scientists still want to hold on to this. Yeah, big bang, big bang, you know. And when somebody asks it, what is the source of energy for big bang? I don't know, but don't question that. They that's why it's so futile. So therefore, you look at this. Now, I want to show you a picture of this beautiful, healthy lady, right? So on the physical, you look at this and say, wow, this person is so unfortunate. But I tell you, our physical body, you know, this young lady is a Dutch girl, 28 years old, suffering from mental disorder. She has decided that she's going to kill herself. And the laws in, in Netherlands allow this. In May, she's going to, she's going to die. You know, so this is what I mean by your body. You look at your body. Oh, I'm struggling with this one. Therefore, I, my thinking, my belief is that my body is my body. I can die. Right? That's why, because why? I cannot live a flourishing life. My life is so struggling and so I cannot cope with this mental illness. Right? That's why I choose to die. Now, on the other hand, you look at this person. Physically, it looks like it's a lot of disability and yet he can live a full, this is what we call rich thriving life is not determined by our physical body, our physical condition is our mind, right? So this is why it's our thinking is so futile. This is a rich life, you know? So how to foster? I'm going to quickly go. Basically, very simple. Three areas we need to look at, but we want to start off with the spirit side. So the first thing we have to do is that we have to reconcile our spiritual life, right? John 1, 12, 13, for to all who did receive Him, who believe in His name, He gave them the right to become children of God. Who were born not by blood or the will or the flesh, but of God. And because of this, He saved us not because of the works done by us, but according to His own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and the renewal of the Holy Spirit that He poured to us, so that we all can have that hope of eternal life. So the first thing we want to do is that to be able to foster a strong, healthy mental health, we all need to get our foundation right, our identity right with God. I tell you, there's one study that this, this is a study of happiness. There are a lot of interviews. You go out on YouTube, you can see people ask about, you know, how to be happy. People talk about money, money, money. But I tell you, this 80-year-old study by Harvard Business School ask, they look up to how many people that live through their life, they in college and they grow old and so on, and they discover that actually to be happy is this 
community, you know, relationship, right? So, so what we have to do is that we all want to be able to, right, have this renewal with Christ and with God and then move this spirit world into our soul to have more. That's the second part, to renew our thought life, right? Do not be conformed by this world, but be transformed by the renewal of the mind so that by testing you may discern the will of God, which is good, acceptable, and perfect, right? And let me just show very quickly, our brains have got 100 billion neurons. But our brain ability is not determined by the neurons, it's by our connection. Do you know Albert Einstein, when he died, they took out his brain, they weigh his brain, his brain is smaller than the average, your brain and my brain, right? So it's not the size of your brain, but your activity. And this is why it's so important. Every time you think of a thought, your neurons fire, psh, millions of it, right? And can you see over here, the design of God, in the third week of a pregnancy, your, 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 uh, your baby would start the first neuron and from then on, 250,000 neurons every minute is produced. You know, until, 10, until 100 billion. Can you see? And here's our problem, our thought life. Every day, we've got 20,000 to 65,000 thoughts. So, which is why Paul says that we each day must check our thought. Because, like I said just now, I'm so unhappy because Edwin got a more, better, uh, sort of uh, lucky drawing. So my, my life becomes miserable and I keep thinking about it all the time. And that's why I have that mental languishing. I'm not healthy. We destroy every argument and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and we take every captive to obey Christ. Because I can tell you this, if we think negatively, let's show you this video. This is a video of our brain. Can you see? The neurons, the roots growing. That means every time we think something, the roots grow and it builds that connection. They call it wiring. So if you think that life sucks, people will treat me bad, I'm so unlucky and so on, then I become to believe that. That becomes my belief system. So I tell you, it's so important what we think. All right? And finally, our physical life. Do you not know that you are God's temple? So while we agree that our physical body one day will perish, but while we are on earth, we must take care of it. And there are many, many things we can do. Now, obviously, I'm not saying that medication is not, not important, but let's be very careful not to always jump to medication because a study goes to show that we have so much, you know, medication in our brain. A lot of times, it's our our management of our health in our brain. Let's look at here, over here. Healthy brain, Alzheimer's brain, right? It's very dry. And the important thing is not the brain, but the connection. Can you see healthy brain? We have all this neural impulse, but in the case of Alzheimer's, it's powdery. That's why it cannot connect. And you know what's the main reason? That's why I said, I, I know, give me one minute. The main reason is that nothing to do with spirit, nothing to do with our thinking, just our health. Sleep, right? Sleep, exercise, drink water. Because what they discovered just only two years ago, that actually is because lack of sleep is causing Alzheimer's in the long term. Why? Alzheimer's is caused by amyloid, the paxiloid protein. And our brain produces bad protein all the time, and our brain pushes this bad protein, except when you sleep, when you sleep well at night, your process of pushing out the protein is 10 times. That's why, my friends, you need to sleep. Okay. Right? And, and another research to show that there is this vagus nerve in our body, just discovered recently. And this vagus nerve actually affects how we stay calm and so on. And just learning this. That's why I say that be curious, go and study more. That, and, you know, just getting your vagus nerve to reset will calm you down. And what are some what are th things you can do? Cold showers. You know? That means when you're stressed out, get a cold pack, just put yourself. Right? That's why now when I learn this, uh, after every shower, turn to cold water. And then, can you see? Breathing. Humming and chanting. That's why I pray in tongues. Hallelujah. I always say, thank you, God. Yeah. Now, I learn this every morning. I say, thank you, God. Praise you, God. You're wonderful. Exercise, right? Meditation, devotion. That's it. I want to say, Pastor, please come up and close up. You have just attended a four-year course, all right? Okay, in this half an hour, praise the Lord. Okay, I don't know what you catch. There's a lot of stuff there. Okay, probably you need to go back to our YouTube, Facebook, you know, study a bit because 
knowledge, okay, help us, okay, to maneuver life when you go through a situation. All the more, okay, learn a bit ahead, okay, so you can uh, be ready and uh, if you were to go through such time. Uh, I just like to quote Psalms 46, verse 10. Uh, in any situation, learn to be still and know that I am Lord. Okay, some said this. So, in other words, be still and know that He is God. God has not fallen out, okay, from His throne. Okay, He is still there and He is in control. A good amen? Yes, huh? Uh, give KC a big hand. Yes. <laughs> All right. I really appreciate him uh, because this week has been uh, really really tough and uh, difficult and painful for our Every Nation Church, Malaysia. I know among many of you who are visiting us, I know the uh, uh, Ng's family or uh, Anwar Lee's family are all here. Uh, we have uh, Pastor, uh, Mr. <laughs> King, all right, Vicky, Pastor Dr. Suiji, who give us uh, the uh, Working Adult and also okay, the Campus Talk, yes. Uh, Friday night, all right? So, talking about uh, one of the top questions that came out among the working adult is, how can I help others when I am also struggling? So, just telling Grace, maybe just say the word, is okay to not be okay, all right? Now, it, it, it's good, okay, to, to know that we are not perfect, okay, uh, but we can be a blessing, okay, to others. Who else I miss, huh? all right? Uh, yeah, yes, uh, Jungan and family also came, okay, from uh, Perth, all right? Oh, you're there, right there. Ivan? Ivan, Pastor, Dr. Ivan? Yes, okay, the other side. Okay, now, I need to make this announcement. I'm saying that it's uh, painful for not only us, but in our every nation world. Uh, okay, probably I just don't, no need to read that. 1st April. Uh, one of our bishops in our every nation world had a heart attack and uh, had he passed on. Uh, that is uh, Bishop Ferdi Kabilin. You know, in the early years of our church, he visited us and uh, taught us how to make disciples. All right? And he also one of the person who echo what it means to have two things in your life. That is a Bible and passport. Okay? Because the mission heart Okay, it's uh, all among them right now. Up, not, not longer after a few days, on the 6th, okay, our beloved uh, Pastor Timothy Low okay, passed on. And uh, Every Nation Malaysia, the pastoral team has come up with a, a statement, okay, which i like to read to you. Okay, which uh, all our churches are reading this. So it says, Dear Every Nation Malaysia family, we understand that this is a very difficult season for the church. As many of you know, our beloved pastor Timothy Lowe passed away on April 6, 2024 due to a massive heart attack during a dinner fellowship after speaking engagement. He was about to conduct a leadership session when he suddenly lost consciousness and became unresponsive. Three doctors who were present attended to him immediately Intercessory prayers were also initiated both in the church that he spoke in and our Every Nation prayer group chats. When it was discovered that he had no pulse, CPR was immediately initiated, chest compression and breathing air into the lungs using a special, specialized mask. CPR and resuscitation efforts were performed for almost an hour, including the time in the ambulance and at the hospital in Ara Damansara. But there was no return of heart function. Pastor Timothy passed on while doing what he loved the most, preaching the word of God and uh, encouraging the local church. Pastor Timothy Low served as our senior pastor of Every Nation Church Malaysia since 1999. Under his guidance, 14 churches were established across various cities in Malaysia, along with one in China. He was known for his ability to simplify God's word and infuse it with Malaysian humor. But 
more than that, Pastor Timothy's preaching, guidance and love touched the hearts of many. He wants to encourage everyone to keep his family and prayer to support one another during this grieving season. As we grieve with hope, we also celebrate the life and legacy of Pastor Timothy. We want to thank the church for the overwhelming support, love and prayers displayed during the week and funeral services. Let us take heed of the last message that he preached okay, in the church that he uh, invited in Ara Damasara, okay, which is to keep the main thing, the main thing that is to honour God okay, and make disciples. Sincerely, the pastoral team of every nation, Church Malaysia. We know that uh, we have Pastor Timothy, Timothy come every year during middle session, uh, for Sundays, all services, last March, no, February, okay, he was with us, do our leader session, have a leader's dinner, we are ch uh, all the church planting leads head and uh, uh, preach all services, all services, he preached on 9.30, 11.30 and 2 o'clock, that was Sunday, Monday rest, then we go to Allah Star for Tuesday, uh, Chinese New Year celebration and all those. So that was the last time probably many of you have seen. Saturday when I received the call from Nick, uh, my phone continued to ring non-stop until I think about 12.30 a.m. when I decided to sleep. And uh, woke, up, woke, woke up was a terrible, terrible feeling. S after 2 o'clock service, about 4.30, we left for KL. We went through, some of you came along uh, so Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday was the funeral. Wednesday, I came back. Some of you came back on Thursday. Friday, we, we go down again. Uh, and uh, I came back yesterday. Uh, so uh, thank you, everyone, for your support. Uh, it's a great loss for all of us. Now, uh, every the Church Malaysia has prepared a short tribute. Uh, we watched the video. Many of you have all your memories. Uh, but again, we have, uh, okay, I'll show the last uh, uh, slide at the end when I come up and pray. All right, uh, let's watch this. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who shall separate us from the shall separate us from the love of Christ, shall tribulation or persecution or distress. Love is a Christmas till it happens in your heart. shall separate us from the love of Christ who shall separate us from the love of Christ shall tribulation or persecution or
we exist as a church, the more we need to think about people who actually do not know God. So my whole church knows that I will leave the 99 for one. That doesn't mean I don't bother about 99. I spend a lot of time there. But I make the greatest and highest priority just to be able to reach people uh, who actually do not know God. Me from your Let us pray. For many of us who know how uh, Pastor Timothy's family looks like, uh, you can picture that, Clarissa, Joel, Joash, Jaden, Joanna. Father God, like today we commit uh, Pastor Timothy Lowe's family before you, especially for Clarissa and the children, Joel, Joash, Jaden, and Joanna. Father, in this time of loss and bereavement and grieving, Father, I ask, Lord, once again, that you are Father of compassion. You are Father of all comfort. Comfort each and every one of them, okay, in this bereavement time. Father, we know, oh God, Lord, that your love for uh, Pastor Timothy far more than any one of us. There's something, Lord, that we take comfort. And now hope, Lord, that is in you. Father, today we ask, Lord, even as we pray for the family, Father, we know Okay, as this is take time, it could be uh, days or week. But Father, I know each and every one, and hearing every one of their eulogy, they will triumph even more and carry that vision, carry that compassion that is in them and the passion, Lord, for the work that the Father has laid okay, in each and every one of their life and fulfilling okay, every one of them. Father, we also commit okay, our every nation, the Church of Malaysia before you. Father, your word says in Hebrew 10, okay, with all this that's happening and uh, going through, okay, moment like this, your word says, Lord, okay, that let us be the people that does, do not shrink back, but Father, that will take upon, okay, that vision and, and not only move forward, but building upon, okay, what you have called us to do, that is honour you and make disciples. We are called, Lord, for a world mission, church planting and campus ministry. Father, let that lay in our heart and uh, having here the last phrase, okay, what Pastor Tim, okay, was saying, keeping the main thing, the main thing. Help us, Lord. Lead us, Lord. And we know, Lord God, Lord, that we will uh, take this journey even uh, better, further and farther. Father, today we give thanks. We pray this in Jesus' name. Everyone say, Amen. Shall we give the Lord a big hand? Okay. So with that, uh, on the 21st of April, which is Sunday evening, 8 p.m., some of you may know Pastor Dr. Victor. Uh, on, the, on the night, uh, he was there as well, helping the family and all uh, uh, pastors who are close to him. And uh, uh, this idea came out, okay, we will do of the next chapter. And, uh, and I need uh, life group leaders, okay, inform, okay, who whoever can make it, okay, on the 21st uh, April, 8 p.m. We will do about eight, an hour kind of thing, 8 or the most 9.30, and probably we'll show this video again. And uh, I know many of you have some memories that you have, eulogy, that you may not, you were not given the opportunity, okay, to go up on the stage on, on the week one, week two, and, and uh, of course, uh, Wednesday morning and also uh, Friday. Uh, we will do a chapter, probably we will record that and uh, send to the family. Alright, so uh, respond by giving your names to your uh, life group leaders. Okay, anything I miss? I think that's about all. Huh? Okay, thank you very much. Continue to pray for us and we know, okay, they will thrive even more. Okay, uh, Boon Hong, will you please come? Right, thank you, Pastor. But I guess service is ended. And as we leave, remember to keep the main thing, the main thing. So we'll see you next Sunday. And Pastor Jonathan will continue with the series um, started, kicked off by Casey so brilliantly. So see you next Sunday. God bless you. <laughs>